Welcome to the March 6, 2023 advance report for McGowan Group clients and NetworthRadio.com listeners. I'm Spencer McGowan, your financial weatherman, with your weekly fast-paced tour of the global financial markets. We're grateful that you've tuned in. Be sure to subscribe, hit like if we uh, if, if we deserve a like. That would be great, and. Be sure to tell your friends that ask you for financial advice that I get my source from McGowan Group's YouTube. It's a team of 10 in Dallas, dedicated financial services professionals serving affluent families across Texas and across the nation. You can set your brainstorming time at networthradio.com. You can contact us there. We love to get feedback and we love to set brainstorming sessions by Zoom or in office with your tour of the Texas Financial History Private Collection and the financial lessons from the great state of Texas. And happy birthday, great state of Texas. Texas Independence Day was this week, in case you didn't know. All right. Atlanta Fed, I want to cover some things. There are two parts. You've heard recession, recession, recession in all the financial media, right? Earnings coming down and boy, that inflation is going to be bad. The Fed's going to raise rates. And of course, we ground away at that all last year with the Fed tightening going further and longer than anybody uh, anticipated. March 22nd is their next meeting. I want to show you some important data before we get to that Fed meeting and portfolio strategy. One of the strategies in, in the uh, portfolio right now we, we were able to buy huge discounts on baskets of bonds paying big interest in the global high yield space. Not without risk, of course, but the yield is huge and the gain potential is there when the Fed stops tightening. We were scooping those up all last year every time that there was big sell-off. Uh, we've also talked about energy. We're going to get to energy at the end with the most important headline when we wrap it up, I'm going to give you the most important headline of the week. All right, here we go. This is an important headline too. You keep hearing about recession. Atlanta Fed publishes weekly where the economy is right now. If you do the math, we are two thirds through the first quarter. Is it a recession right now? The answer is not according to the Atlanta Fed, and they've been much more accurate. This happened last quarter. For those of you that tune in, that last quarter was important too. Now, see this blue line? That is the blue chip consensus of all the learned academic economists and what they think the economy is going to do for the quarter. Now, you can see they came up a bit. Well, last quarter they got trounced. They were at 0.2, 0.4% anemic growth, borderline recession. Atlanta Fed said, no, it's going to be about three. It comes in at 2.7. Well, they gather the data every week and they update every week. And they, they are now 2.3% real economic growth right now. Not too hot, not too cold. That's the good news for the week. And all these learned economists are saying a half a percent. And of course, they got embarrassed last quarter. Here we go. What's this? This is the price, the median home price in the United States, the trailing 12 months change in price. This goes all the way back to 1998, by the way. Whoa, what's this? That's a 24% gain in the median home price. At right at the middle of the year. That was big inflation. We've been telling you for six months, inflation, the big surprise is it's coming down. Wow, what's that? That is the median home price in the United States is now down for the past year. That's deflation. That's the opposite of inflation, right? Price is falling, right? Price is going up. So, the housing boom, clearly housing market, you could make the case that it's in a recession. But this news says over the next few months, that data works its way into Federal Reserve strategy. So that's a good advanced report. This is the Dow. So you can see the year started, this is year to date, with a big old rally. Everything's great. Then 
We go further into January and we finish up kind of right up here. Oh, wow, that's a nice little gain for the Dow. Whoa, what happened here? It's the Federal Reserve dance. The Federal Reserve go raise rates and then they're going to cause a recession and then it's going to be bad, right? So it's an anticipation of that March 22nd meeting that I mentioned. The rally this week over 1% from the end of last week to this week. Uh, and part of that is because you had good news. Salesforce is in the Dow. Salesforce comes out with awesome earnings and then they raise their forecast for 2023. That doesn't sound like a recession. They're the leader in customer relations management software, by the way, they dominate the category. They said things look pretty good. Here, this is the fourth quarter earnings for the S&P 500. You've heard earnings are gonna go down. How much did they go down from the year prior? Minus 2.6% now that the S&P is reported. Here's another clue. Okay, so that's, you know, we've had that happen before where earnings go down a bit. It happened from 2018 all the way through the pandemic, earnings went down. Uh, the Dow made a new high about the time that earnings made a new high. I'm about to show you when that's projected to happen. Okay, look at this, Two, minus 2.6, that's not bad. Sales growth 5.7, that's about like inflation. 54% gain in energy earnings. Energy dominated with great reports, and we'll tell you what they're gonna do with all that money. It's important. Then you get industrials, consumer discretion, big surprise. Earnings were up 25%, and so yeah, that doesn't look like a recession. Real estate up 7% in earnings growth. That's a wow. A lot of real estate companies have automatic rent increases at the pace of inflation. And so that benefited them. What is this? I'll have to give it to you verbally because it's pretty small, but here's the important point. Yes, earnings peaked at $58 per S and P unit per quarter for the third quarter. Then, it goes down to 51 for the current quarter, dropped to 56 in the fourth quarter. Well, why is this significant? It goes from 51 to 62. Now that's the third quarter of 2024, but the market is anticipatory. So you have a little earnings recession, you get to a new high somewhere uh, at the beginning of next year, earnings are capable of reaching a new high. Wow, that's not bad news. What's this? Stock buybacks. S&P 500 is worth about $20 trillion and all stocks in the U.S. are worth about $40 trillion. The buybacks that are already announced, now a company buys back their stock, they get a pile of cash, they buy back their stock. Well, that means that every shareholder has a bigger asset base that they control when you shrink the number of shares, right? If you had one share, it'd be an astronomical figure if there was just one guy that owned it. All right, what does it mean? A trillion dollars happens to be about 5% of the S&P value that is devoted to buying back stock. When are they gonna buy it back? every time there's a downdraft in the stock. What does that do? It puts a floor underneath those companies. And who are they? Well, here's a clue. Chevron, UPS, HCA Healthcare, Skyworks, Kinder Morgan. Wow. And those companies are gonna have more resiliency as they buy back stock. Earnings per share go up, revenue per share goes up, assets under control go up for every share. That is the most important news for this year because it makes it harder, at least for these companies, to have a significant downturn. I'm Spencer McGowan, President, McGowan Group Wealth Management. Be sure to set your time for your brainstorming session. Just go to networthradio.com. Thank you for tuning in to Net Worth Media today and our efforts over the past two decades to educate clients and help clients make great decisions. That's the reason that we're here at YouTube McGowan Group, Apple Podcasts, Net Worth Radio, and NetWorthRadio.com. The Net Worth Media 
effort is designed to help you make great decisions and address value at risk of loss, fluctuation in the markets. Remember, if we talk about a security, doesn't make it a recommendation until you come down and get a plan from McGowan Group Asset Management, the team that cares. You can set a Zoom meeting or an in-office meeting at the Crescent and we'll give you a written plan that encompasses what we believe to be the best allocations. This is a team of 10 devoted to you. That includes the research that you see each week from Reuters, from Bloomberg, and from the best sources. We always post links at networthradio.com for what we believe can help you make great decisions, the research that comes up. Now, the net worth media effort is also designed to address cycles in the market, value at risk of loss. At networthradio.com, you can get the ADV form that shows, yes, we're a fiduciary, a registered investment advisor. It covers the costs of hiring our team to help you in the future ahead. It really helps to have an expert team on your side that you can reach by phone, email, and of course, a team that's here for you every week to address what's going on in the markets because anxiety can often lead investors to make decisions that are either dangerous, chasing things, or selling things when they shouldn't. And that's a big part of our planning effort at McGowan Group Asset Management. Thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to serving you and your family in the years ahead.